Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Donna Chow, and I am your host and moderator for today's eLotus webinar. eLotus is the leading provider of continued education for acupuncturists. If you are new to eLotus, remember to sign up today for an eLotus account and receive a free once you course as a welcome gift. This offer is valid for new accounts only. Now, before we begin, let's do a little housekeeping. If you're a big fan of learning new acupuncture points, visit eLotus Core. It's our free resource tool for traditional acupuncture and master dongs acupuncture. Here, you'll be able to learn indications, locations, and more. We are constantly updating for new images, so if you do end up on a page without an image location, don't worry, it'll be there soon. In addition to all these amazing goodies that you find at our eLotus Core, we will also be adding an auricular points section soon. Today's webinar is Intro to Environmental Causes of Infertility and EMF Sensitivity TCM Treatments presented by Michelle Merrimore and serves as a preview to what you will expect to see next weekend at Michelle's full day webinars. Today's class will be from 1 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. And if you have not done so already, you can get your copy of the lecture notes from the Blue Course Access page in your account. If you want to join the chat, please do the following right now. Set your chat preference to everyone so that everyone can see what you're typing. You'll have to do this manually because by default, the settings allow only the speaker and the, set and the staff to see what you're writing. So our speaker today is Michelle Marimore who developed the body feedback style of acupuncture, which combines palpitation with classical acupuncture point prescriptions, essential oils, Chinese herbs, and nutritional supplements to address health concerns. She is regarded as an acupuncture innovator and incorporating functional medicine into her practice. She uses functional medicine to get to the root of the problems in difficult cases and provides several treatment options so that patients can choose the treatment that are most, that are most affordable for them. Michelle has been a speaker for us for eight years, and you can find a variety of her recordings on her website. I will post the link to her class once the class starts in a bit. Now let's get started with today's webinar and welcome Michelle Marimore. Michelle, please go ahead and take over now by sharing your PowerPoint. Great. Okay, can everybody see the introduction slide? Can, you, can I see the chat while I'm up here? Yes. Is there a way? How do I see the chat? On the top, Michelle, you know, when you move your mouse over, yeah. when you see the little, what's it called, the panel that come out, it should be option there to open up that chat for you. Mm. Let me type in something for you so you can see it. It's up here. Yeah. It should come in the middle of your screen. Are we only chat? Oh, here's the chat. Do you see it? Yeah, now I can move it out of the way. Perfect. Okay. So then I can kind of keep an eye. I'd like to um, welcome everybody to the class. I love teaching for eLotus um, because the classes reach such a far and wide range of people and places in the world. And I like to make the classes interactive. So if everybody could, um, be willing to participate and, and, you know, if you feel moved to share something in the chat, please do. I will keep an eye on it. Um, so the first thing is um, the, the world is changing. And the nice thing about traditional Chinese medicine and TCM is that it has given us the tools to be able to evolve as practitioners and change what the world is the world changes. And that is the main reason that we are such a strong um, healing provider or medical healthcare practitioner for centuries now. And I have been thinking about how do we look at EMFs and all of the different plastics and chemicals and what they're doing to the body, um, the endocrine disrupting chemicals in particular, and that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today and in detail in the class. Um, in 10 days. So I started thinking about this a few years back and I've been playing with it for a few years. Um, how many people in the um, group here today are either evaluating for EMF sensitivity, thinking that maybe 
there is an EMF sensitivity problem or um, are you guys even aware of like that's going on with your, your patients? I'm just curious. Oh, we got Portugal here. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me get my, Ooh, how do I get, there we go. Okay. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is the endocrine disrupting chemicals and the environmental causes of infertility. So infertility is just becoming more and more problematic in today's society. And I think we're gonna see it um, really exponentially um, affect couples trying to conceive or you know individuals trying to conceive in that case too, over the next 20 to 30 years, because our world is so saturated with toxic chemicals and they're mostly endocrine disrupting chemicals um, that it's starting to affect generation after generation. It's just making it harder and harder. So one of the interesting studies that I found that we're going to talk about in detail in the upcoming class, but I thought we could review it as a start, is that in 2019, there was a review study that evaluated the impact of endocrine disrupting chemicals on women's reproductive potential. So first of all, let's just read through this and then we'll, we'll talk about it. BPAs um, decrease estradiol levels. Um, PCBs diminish anti-malarian hormone concentrations. We've got BPAs, parabens, and phthalates. They reduce the antrophollicle count. BPAs, triclosan, phthalates, and PCBs diminish oocyte quality. So egg quality, uh, yeah, egg quality. PFCs and PCBs lowered fertilization rates. BPAs, phthalates, and PCBs decreased implantation rates. Triclosan, PCBs, and BPAs reduced embryo quality. Parabens, phthalates, and phthalates lowered the rate of uh, clinical pregnancies. So the issue here is that sometimes these conditions can look like a deficiency in Chinese medicine. So if if we think about it in pure TCM terms, estradiol is uh, usually a reflection of blood and yin in Chinese medicine. So now we have a substance that's decreasing blood and yin. Um, and then if we have um, PCBs in the mix and there's diminished anti-malarian hormone concentrations, and then the woman is maybe going for an IVF and they do an antrophollicle count and that looks low, um, those three things right there would make a woman look like they could have es essence deficiency, right? Or yin and blood deficiency, but more, I think if we see reduced antrophollicle count, reduced, uh, anti-malarian hormone concentrations and reduced estrogen, the first thing that comes to mind is maybe deficiency pattern, right? In today's world, uh, what I'm seeing a lot of times is that it's actually an excess pattern that has to be cleared and detoxed first before the woman can be tonified um, or you know the essence can be nourished and tonified. And we'll talk about this in the upcoming class. Studies are showing that when women have a lot of these elevated toxins in their urine, that their outcome for IVF isn't as good. So sometimes, um, certain European countries are actually starting to have women go through detox protocols first before they go into IVF. If we think about the medications they use in IVF, they're really strong tonifying supplementing type drugs. Um, and then to see pretty um, poor results and failed cycles, that's got to be a clue that there's an excess or some type of stagnation there. So in my style of acupuncture, I created this body feedback system where I listen to the body and I let the body tell me where the root of the problem is. And usually when I'm dealing with somebody who's had a lot of exposure to EDCs, either the liver and or the large intestine come up as flags for detoxification issues. So there's certain um, parts of detoxification that occur in the liver, and then there's also more parts of detoxification that occur in the colon or the large intestine. So it's really important to be able to identify 
if the person is having an issue in both areas or one area and and how do you know when these things are cleared up to be able to then tonify your supplements has anybody ever thought about that are you guys seeing that in your practice like how do you know when somebody is detoxified enough to be able to then then supplement them because a lot of the people that come in with the endocrine disrupting chemicals they have all different types of TCM patterns and um, some do need actual tonification, but if you try and tonify on top of the EDCs, it doesn't work very well. So let's talk about where the endocrine disrupting chemicals are coming from. So they're coming from the drinking water. That's a big one. Um, there's all kinds of information and resources I'm gonna be providing about this. Um, and I actually have all of my clients come in and bring me samples of the, their drinking water in glass jars. I have them bring their tap water, their filtered water to their appointments. And I actually test them using the body feedback testing techniques to their body to determine if they can drink their water or if they need to um, change over to uh, some other type of water source or change their filter is how many people here are actually, if you could put it in the chat, that would be great. Looking at the water sources that people are drinking when they're coming in for treatments, if, especially if they need detoxification. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you guys some really good tips on how to deal with these EMFs and how to identify how much of a problem they are. Oops. So also I've had several clients and uh, one of them in a case study that we're going to have. Um, yeah. <laughs> Is that body feedback muscle testing technique? Yep. Yeah. So the body feedback muscle testing technique actually muscle test is to the acupuncture meridian system. So it's different than the type of muscle testing where people kind of put their arms out or different types of kinesiology. I have a lot of videos when I was actually doing demonstrations for eLotus that you guys can watch um, to, to learn how to do it. But it you basically place the water on the upper abdomen somewhere between CV12 and CV15 and test the, the master points in the upper trap or upper shoulder looking for an involuntary change in muscle tension and tightness and pain. So the clients uh, completely taken out of like the interaction of it, they just sit there and they feel the difference too. So clothing, I had one fertility client that I'm going to have as a case study. Um, she has an immune system response to the synthetics in the clothing and why this is becoming even more problematic is because a lot of um, people are trying to be more green and they're using recycled synthetic fabrics. And then the skin is the largest organ of absorption. So especially if somebody's kind of hot and sweaty and their pores are open, they'll absorb the chemicals through their skin and absorb in the endocrine disrupting chemicals that way. So I've got some studies on that and I actually have a case study um, on that. Uh, and that creates immune system imbalances in addition to all the other problems we just talked about, um, which can play a big part in infertility also. Then we've got air pollution. We've got industrial sources, automobiles, household dust even contains endocrine disrupting chemicals. So I think everybody should have their husband hire housekeepers. That's my recommendation there. No, just kidding. Um, food sources. So people are need to be aware of the food that they're touching when the, it's touching the plastics and especially the BPA can linings are a huge problem in, in this area um, that they're absorbing in the, the, the food or the drink is absorbing in the chemicals and then they're eating and drinking that. Now, I think this is a real big problem with those um, alcohol in a can, basically the, both the beer and um, those hard liquor drinks. I don't drink them because they come this way. Um, but the hard seltzers are usually in BPA lined cans. And I've had people coming in 
after they started drinking these hard seltzers a summer or two ago with a lot more toxic burdens in their body. So that's something that people need to kind of be aware of too and think about. And then we just have general farming practices, um, which if it's conventional farming, it's pretty toxic. If you live in an area where there is conventional farming going on, and, and I have that here in Wisconsin, a lot of the people, their water sources are very toxic and overloaded with nitrates and chemicals from farming that makes them very sick. So the sickest people I actually have in my practice are usually people that live either right next to farms and their water sources, they're on well water and their wells are severely contaminated or they live on the farm. Okay, now EMFs. This is actually one of my favorite topics these days because EMFs, they're actually like amplifiers for people's healthcare problems. And, and then they cause a whole host of them too. But I found in my practice that if I address the EMFs and just have people do a few things to reduce them on their body and their environment, um, that it does make a big difference with their health. And then there's supplements that we can do and things we can talk about um, next weekend. But um, the common sources of EDC exposure, and oh, wait, we talked about that. Let's up to the next one. Electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs. There's different types of electromagnetic frequencies electromagnetic frequencies, and they include, this is what I think is most problematic today, um, is the um, Wi-Fi access points, routers, smartphones, smartwatches, tablets, cordless and mobile phones, including their base stations, Bluetooth devices, and radio and TV broadcast antennas. And they emit, emit between three and 300 gigahertz. How many people here wear like an Apple watch or a smart watch or a Fitbit? I'm just curious. The first time this kind of was brought to my awareness is I had a client. Yeah, I, I don't wear them. I can't even wear a regular watch, but I had a client who came in with all kinds of heart arrhythmia, anxiety, panic attacks. And she had been seeing me once a month for honestly over 10 years she was doing great, doing wonderful. And then all of a sudden she comes in like this and I'm like, what's going on? What did you do? And we talked about it for a little bit. And she's like, she took off this Fitbit when I went to test her pulse. And I'm like, is that new? Is that a new Fitbit? She's like, oh yeah, I just got it. And I'm like, I wonder if that's it. So I had her get on the table. I had her take the Fitbit off. I checked her cardiac reflex, which is under the left shoulder blade. I checked the top of the left shoulder and the anxiety reflex at CV 17 and they were kind of okay. And then I put the Fitbit on her upper abdomen and sure enough, it was pain and tightness and she couldn't believe it. Um, and I'll tell you guys why that happened in a minute, but she just returned her Fitbit and she's never worn one since. So yeah, I had a patient with terrible rashes from their Apple watch. You're going to see why in a minute. Okay, cool. Um, so then we also have issues with electrical wiring, light fixtures and appliances that emit between three hertz to three kilohertz. Um, those are people that are a little bit more sensitive. What I've noticed, and then even the last one, magnet, magnetic fields due to harmonic voltage and current distortion um, from electrical wiring lamps, especially complex, compact fluorescent lamps and electronic devices. In my experience, the people that are even sensitive to the fluorescent lighting and different things like that, their bodies are actually already pretty sensitized to EMFs and they're, they have problems. Um, and I've been able to help them and you can help them too. And it, and it actually works. I've had quite a bit of success lately with this. Um, but people that are that sensitive um, tend to be down that path of the EMF sensitivity for a while. So EM, how EMFs impact health. Uh, like Donna said in my intro, I like to include Western medicine type blood work 
and um, different labs in my practice. And so I'll always be sharing that information with you. And what if, the thing I think that's nice about this is that we can basically understand EMFs and EDCs from what's going on in a Western standpoint, like really grasps kind of what is occurring. And then in my head, I put it into TCM terms. And then I use the body feedback system to confirm what I'm thinking or to help guide me as I figure this out, because the body feedback system uses the patient to be the one to dictate the treatments and dictate what's going on. So I actually learn from my patients. It's a really cool system. So basically from a Western standpoint, EMFs, um, affect the innate immune cells, which are white blood cells, including basophils, um, so I can see dendric cells. Um, oh, perfect. There we go. Dendric cells, eosinophils, Langerhans cells, mast cells, monocytes, macrophages, neutrophils, and NK cells. They react to electromagnetic magnetic fields by generating reactive oxygen species, ROS, which are crucial intracellular messengers. So let's talk about this for a second. Basophils are usually um, present to fight off infections. Um, eosinophils are elevated when there's allergies and also parasites. Then mast cells are what's part of initiating the histamine response. So when the person said they got a terrible rash from their Apple Watch, it's because the EMFs are creating these high levels of the eosinophils and elevating the mast cells and creating inflammation. Whenever you see reactive oxygen species, it's um, basically um, free radicals that are um, damaging the body, causing cellular aging, um, cellular destruction, if it gets really bad, um, and uh, just really disrupting the cell's ability to replicate. And it end up um, damaging the DNA too. So I've noticed that several of my clients that I know have elevated sensitivity to EMFs, they, they often have elevated eosinophils. So that's something like if I'm looking at some lab work or blood, um, somebody's blood work they bring in and the eosinophils are supposed to be um, three or under, if they're like three or five or eight and everything else looks fine. Um, one of the um, case studies we're gonna look at this weekend actually had this and I had them do a stool test to make sure there was no parasites and there were no parasites. And she had really high sensitivity to EMFs. Okay, there are discrepancies in applied parameters of EMF studies, which um, complicates the direct comparison of downstream antioxidant responses and immune regulatory signaling. So we talk about this in detail, well, kind of in detail, and we, we go over it more in the, the class, but basically, EMFs affect people very differently and the study parameters, it's really hard to get people in a bubble of EMFs that's all the same. Um, it's a little easier when they're doing animal studies, but with people, it there's lots of um, moving factors that makes it hard to get replicated studies, but there's a lot of studies on PubMed. Um, when I was preparing for the class, I think I picked like my favorite 20 studies, but there were hundreds of studies on EMFs. So most studies agree that EMF induced hyperproduction of the reactive oxygen species is the main cause of EMF hypersensitivity. So some people are fine with EMFs. I'm, I'm okay with them. I'm not, um, I'm not sensitive to them. I don't have the gene that triggers the sensitivity. I can tell if if I'm, there's too much, I just, you can feel it. You can feel the heat off of it. Um, but, um, I don't have the extreme hypersensitivity. So, whoops. I don't know why my cursor does, or my mouse does that may not touch it. <laughs> so, um, ROS reactive oxygen species mediate cellular responses 
and they are generated upon external external stimulation via oxida oxidation of reducing agents. So what does this mean? Basically, excessive levels of cellular ROS are met by a cascade of antioxidant enzymes, such as superoxide dismutase, um, which is often referred to as SOD, SOD, glutathione peroxidase, GPX, catalase, CAT or CAT, and pero, oh God, perozyrodoxins, PRDXs. So basically these are all the body's mechanisms to deal with EMFs. So they help the body to get rid of free radicals. They're antioxidant producing. They produce enzymes that help with detoxification and getting rid of inflammation. So when people have genetic mutations in any of these areas, and then one other gene area we're going to look at, it sets them up for EMF sensitivity. And this also sets them up for endocrine disrupting chemical toxic overload. So if anybody does gene, looks at the gene reporting, which I'm really into these days, I can see where people are prone to having these backlogs um, in their system of EMFs or EDCs. So what do we do as TCM practitioners? Where do we start? What do we do? Um, TCM fertility enhancement for endocrine disrupting chemicals and EMF pathology. Basically in my body feedback system, I realized that there's a hierarchy in which the body needs to be treated. And by using the body feedback system, and we'll go through it in a minute with one of the, I have a little case study in here. You'll see what I'm talking about. It guides you to where the patient is at and where they need help and support. So there's a hierarchy for addressing this pathology first and first um, and, and super critical is to detoxify and improve liver function. That is critical. How many people like palpate the liver area, like press on the rib cage right under here um, with their clients? I'm just curious, how many people here do palpation style acupuncture? If you guys can put it in the chat, that would be great. Um, I suggest everybody press on their client's liver area before they start their treatment to see if they have liver backup. Um, and it's really important at the end of the treatment to make sure that's improved. And this is often how I test which type of detoxifying supplements are used. So there's another way if people aren't used to like palpating a person, you can check the pulse to confirm your work too. So um, you can still use the information I'm gonna tell you and you can still check it and have the person's body guide you to what's going on by monitoring the pulse throughout the entire treatment. So um, first we detoxify and improve liver functions. And then after that, have to calm and balance the immune system. So as you saw in the earlier slide, there's all these different immune functions that get get the, that get upregulated or that are upregulated when people are exposed to either EDCs or EMFs. So the immune system almost has to be retrained and settled down after the pathogenic overload is dealt with. Um, that's very important, especially because in dealing with fertility, the body has to accept the pregnancy and the immune system has to be okay with a foreign body growing inside. And a lot of times I find when people have repeat miscarriage or chemical pregnancies or just aren't getting pregnant and it's unexplained, it's almost always because the immune system is out of balance. So that's one thing we're gonna learn um, is how to do that in, in the full eight hour classes. And you can catch that in my other videos too. Um, third is to restore the hypothalamus pituitary access. So this is the endocrine glands in the brain. EMFs are shown to um, have an affinity for, for causing problems with these glands, the hypothalamus pituitary and the pineal glands. 
So a lot of people's endocrine systems will be disrupted. And especially if they have an overload of EDCs, the hypothalamus can't figure out what to do. So it just downregulates the reproductive system and also downregulates hormones for, for everybody who's exposed to this excessively. And that has to be reset and turned back on. Um, wonder if your protocol here works for those with, oh, yeah, my protocol here works great with autoimmune conditions. I've had much success. I had one client with lupus that I, we figured it out. She ran some labs at a, a local clinic, a naturopathic clinic, and they diagnosed her with lupus. So I did some treatments. We figured some things out. And by the time she got to the rheumatologist, they told her she didn't have lupus and she had no symptoms. And she had been having symptoms for probably about four years that were pretty significant. So she, yeah, this, it works really good. Um, the fourth thing to do is to regulate the adrenals. So the adrenal glands is how our body deals with stress. And one of the big problems with people with EMF sensitivities is their bodies over respond to stress, um, situational stress, environmental stress. It's like the EMF just amplifies stress in the body. And what I've noticed with most of my EMF sensitive clients is um, they have adrenal fatigue or adrenal overload, or they have like ADD, ADHD, and then they take stimulants and stimulating medications that burn out their adrenals. It's just an adrenal mess. However, before I can even get to fix their adrenals, I got to do all those other things first. And if, if I don't follow that order, they don't get good results. But when I follow this order, it, it might take six to eight weeks, but by the time two months have rolled around and they'll feel better even within just a couple of treatments. Um, that's the first case study for the EMS EMF class too. It's pretty interesting. She's, she's all about that. Um, and then the fifth thing to do is regulate the thyroid. So all those people with hypothyroid, hypothyroid or Hashimoto's where the thyroid levels go up and down and up and down before we can even really truly stabilize and fix that all these other things have to be fixed and the adrenals have to be fixed. So, and that's evidenced by in Western medicine, so many people that take levothyroxine to try and fix their thyroid problem, their hypothyroid, their doctors just keep increasing the dose. How many people here have seen where their patients are constantly having their thyroid medication increased when they first go on there, um, especially, or if they first come to you, it's because all these other things have got to get dealt with before the thyroid can actually get work properly. And then from there, you can boost ovarian function and testes function. So what if we have somebody who's coming for infertility and they really look like they're essence deficient? And like my first example, where they have those low AMH, low estradiol, and low antrophollicle count. It's not until I've done the first five levels, and we can skip through them. It's not like we have to do one with every treatment. It's, it's where the body tells me a person's stuck. So sometimes people come in and they're honestly, 85 to 90% of people are stuck with detoxification. So we get that dealt with first. I usually give them a good treatment, have them take the right supplements, make some changes, and then have them come back in two to three weeks after their bodies had a chance to detoxify and get caught up. Um, and that usually works fine. And then maybe they are, they go right to the adrenals. Like maybe their immune system is fine. Maybe their HP access um, basically restores its own balance after they're detoxified and they come in and they're just highly stressed people. And then the next treatment I'm working on the adrenals. So that's a really good sign because then that tells me that if their body wants an adrenal treatment, cause I let their body dictate to me what treatment it gets, then I know that those other things are, are working. Okay. And then we work on the adrenals and then I'll add some stuff for fertility and for improving the essence. Whoops. Which way did I go? There we go. So, so that's 
why it's so important to be able to read a person's body, I think, is to be able to know, can you get to boosting the ovaries yet? Are you stuck with detoxification or the immune system being off? Um, how, how, and when can you get there? Okay. So, okay. So yeah, here we go. So the TCM approach to EMFs and EDCs are discussed in detail in the full day classes, just in general. So you have a good idea. Oh, before detoxifying the liver, do you find it's important to clear other detox pathways in the body, the colon? Yeah. So usually if somebody comes in um, for an appointment, I'll, if it's the liver, I'll put them on the right probiotic anyway, just to kind of help with the colon. In my practice, I carry five or six different kinds of probiotics because everybody needs what is unique to them. So I will grab five or six different types of probiotics and I will test them on their first appointment. Um, and then usually if that person comes in for future appointments and the root treatment that the body wants is the colon for the large intestine, I'll know that that's where their detoxification pathway is off. So there's one person in the um, class for fertility here that I'm going to have as a case study. And that was her thing. It looked like the liver in the beginning, but it turned out that genetically her body doesn't detox right through the glucuronidase pathway, the beta glucuronidase pathways in the colon. I think I'm saying that right. So her family history is very strong in reproductive cancers. So her mother died young of breast cancer, um, grandparents or grandmother had ovarian cancer, father had prostate cancer, like on both sides. And so once I cleared her liver, she repeatedly would come up as a large intestine colon treatment. Um, and she had a very interesting history and we had to reset everything on her. She's a great case study. That's going to be a really interesting case study for our class. Um, but I do see that often as you got to support the colon because otherwise the colon just reabsorbs. Some people whose colons don't work very well or don't have the right bacterial flora, they'll reabsorb the toxins that are being detoxed and dumped out. And those are usually people that have a lot of um, like negative side effects of detoxing, like mild headache, mild fatigue, nausea, he um, especially the headaches. A lot of times it's because they need more colon support. And usually in my practice, my people don't have that much discomfort at all with detoxing because we support their colon, make sure to support their colon. So thanks for the good question there. So in general, back to the slide, EMFs generate heat that start as depressive heat and affect the liver due to inflammatory responses and can spread into other forms of heat, blood heat, damp heat, and deficiency heat. So EMFs, I mean, you guys can feel it with your phone, right? Your phone gets hot, like, like, electronics get hot. That's kind of often what makes electronics wear out too, is they get too hot too frequently. So it's that heat that is, is basically becomes depressive heat right away in the body. And then it um, can morph into blood heat, damp heat, or deficiency heat based on what's going on with a person's constitution. Endocrine disrupting chemicals cause stasis, heat, and phlegm pathology, depending on a person's constitutional health. So sometimes it's really obvious because they have polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, but sometimes it's not as obvious. And um, how many people here have clients that are like the thin type polycystic ovarian syndrome, where they might have some facial acne, but that for the most part, their normal body weight um, they might even be slender or thin. Those people still have phlegm pathology. It's just a little bit more hidden. It's not quite so obvious as somebody who's overweight, who has metabolic disorders and PCOS. Then we have EMFs and ED endocrine disrupting chemicals, disrupting meridian and organ function based on genetic weaknesses and constitutional health. So both of these, I think these EMFs and EDCs are kind of amplifiers for what is already 
a constitutional weakness for somebody. And it just makes people sicker. That's why we have a sicker, more unhealthy people these days. Um, and chronic illness is definitely on the rise. Okay, so let's get into the case study. Um, Becky was age 30. She had chronic right side pain over the liver that started with her first pregnancy and became worse with her second pregnancy. She felt stabbing sharp pain over the liver area three days after her second baby was delivered via C-section. This pain became constant and burning and has remained. Um, her liver enzymes were very high after pregnancy and they have remained slightly elevated when she came in for this initial appointment. She had to take Zofran for extreme nausea during each pregnancy to be able to work and function at home. For almost three years, Becky had been pregnant or breastfeeding with only one period between her two children. Her first child was born with a vaginal delivery at age 27. Then she had one menstrual period and she got pregnant again right away after 14 months of breastfeeding. She immediately conceived her second child. With her second child, she required an emergency C-section to, to deliver um, her second child who flipped a breech after using a riding lawnmower to cut grass. I did not wanna go there. I did not wanna ask her like what she was thinking when she got on a riding lawnmower to cut grass at whatever, 38 weeks along. I didn't even wanna go back and ask her. I just kind of sat there and was like, oh, okay. And just like, sometimes I wonder why people create these self-fulfilling prophecies. Like, I don't know, but I didn't say anything. So I don't know anything more about it. But anyway, I just thought I'd put that in there. Her initial acupuncture session was 10 months after having her second child. Okay. She was still breastfeeding and her menstrual periods had not resumed yet. When Becky was in Colorado skiing, she developed severe altitude sickness, which triggered the right um, para parotid, parotid gland swelling, jaw tightness. So that's a gland right in here for releasing saliva. And I think it gets the ones that gets the, the salivary stones, I think is what they call them. Um, jaw tightness, she had sensations of heat and congestion on the right side of her face and her medical doctor prescribed her two rounds of antibiotics but the symptoms continued with fluctuating intensity. At her initial appointment, her right-sided burning pain was a four out of 10. The constant burning pain varied from a one to 10 to an eight out of 10 um, since the birth of her second child. She had chronic headaches, numbness in the extremities and dizziness for two years now. So, her symptoms have improved with a gluten-free diet and avoiding processed foods, but she still has all the symptoms. So her health history. So I have um, my history intake forms set up to basically tell me what meridians to look for imbalances with. Um, I love my forms. You guys are more than welcome to use them. You can copy them. I don't care. You can have all, all the information there. So we'll look at them in a minute. But she had three uh, symptoms in the wood element. Basically, were all over joint pain, pain in the right shoulder, and right and the right side of the neck, and bloating and pain after eating. She had three symptoms in the ministerial fire: congestion in the ears, swollen lymph nodes, and belching, burping, and heartburn. So what's interesting is the wood element and the ministerial fire element pair together. So that's your liver and pericardian joie yin level and gallbladder and triple burner Xiao yang level. So it's interesting that her basically it pointed to me to these two um, elements not functioning right. And this is where the root of her problem was and still is actually. She had two symptoms in the fire element, anxiety and panic, attack, panic attacks and pain in the sacrum area. Two symptoms in the water element, low back pain, worse at the end of the day, fear, depression, and lack of motivation. One symptom in the earth element, fatigue after eating. She was so exhausted that she couldn't keep her eyes open. She had no symptoms in the metal element, so her immune system looked okay. The majority of symptoms in the body feedback, oh yeah, that's what I'm saying, was in the body feedback third trisection for detoxification and regeneration. So basically what I've done is I've taken the um, 
Chinese clock and looked at paired elements, um, how we, we learn them in school and translated them to more Western um, systems. So um, that's kind of what I'm referring to here. Uh, the trisections is what I call them, the three trisections. And then additional symptoms in the second trisection affected her fertility and the endocrine system. So this is what clued me into she's got, she had major detoxification issues. She, her hormone questionnaire was a mess. And she based this on her cycles prior, just prior to getting pregnant, which I mean, it's probably good. She started trying to get pregnant early and got pregnant quickly, but I'm going to show you guys what it looks like here real quick. Let me take this out here. And then we have it here. So this is what my confidential health history looks like. So you can see it's very organized. Each section has 10 questions. I like to do things really systematically. I was an accountant for, for my life prior to becoming an acupuncturist. So you can see that the wood element and the ministerial fire element here have the most things checked. And then this is what her cycling hormone assessment looked like. It's like a little bit of everything all over the place. The only problem she didn't have was testosterone. She didn't have a testosterone excess, which is category seven. I don't like people to know what the categories are ahead of time. Cause I, I don't want them to kind of have any influence to what they're, how they're answering this questionnaire. But basically this means that her um, hormone receptor sites on the cells are clogged with endocrine disrupting chemicals. Because whenever there's signs of excess and deficiency that are fairly similar in the same hormone, it means that there's a downregulation in the hormone receptor sites, either because they're clogged or something else has caused them to downregulate. Um, and with as much liver pain and sensitivity she, as she had, I knew that, okay, we have to detox her. So this is how I figure out too, when I have a new person, if I can, um, start with tonifying or not because if their questionnaire is all over the place like this then they have to detox first for a little bit so those are the questionnaires all right let's get back to full screen uh, slide there we go so you can see she scored seven and these all have 10 questions or Sorry, it's not 10 questions, but it, they have the same number of questions, but they just rate them uh, zero through four. Um, so she scored highest in um, progesterone excess and then estrogen excess. And then she had the deficiency signs. So this is how I knew she was a little bit of a mess. Whoops. And needed to be detoxed. So her pulse was overall thin and deep to wiry and forceful in the liver gallbladder positions, the guan position on the left, and the lung and large intestine sun positions on the right. So this could be the liver gallbladder and colon detoxification pathways. Um, the pulse was really, really thin too. I found people with EMF sensitivity have very thin pulses and we're going to learn about that in the EMF class and why that happens. The tongue coating was thin and glossy with a pale body and a thin pale side. So she's looking kind of deficient here, right? So if I just went based on the pulse and the tongue, I probably would have tried to tonify her right away. However, I knew that I had to clean her up with detoxification first because of that questionnaire and so much pain on her liver. Like you can't, you can't tonify on top of stagnation and stasis and phlegm. You, tonification has to occur once those things are moved out. So her assessment though, her Chinese medical assessment, liver blood deficiency, blood stasis with heat and chi stagnation and rising liver wind and phlegm. So whenever I see signs of liver wind, internal wind, or liver yang rising, that's a big indicator. There's probably an EMF sensitivity too. So let's get into here. 
So TCM plan as usual, nourish liver blood, transform stasis, cool heat, coarse liver cheese stagnation, anchor liver wind and transform phlegm. And in my body feedback plan, I'm gonna harmonize the pericardium, triple burner, liver and gallbladder third trisection. So that's the, um, that Zhui Yin and Xiaoyang pairs. Now, the first thing I did is I checked her for EMF sensitivity and her water quality by testing the client's cell phone and the biomat on the treatment table to the master alarm points, um, triple burner 15, SI 13 and gallbladder 21. I kind of test those together um, at the same time. So basically I, I had her on the treatment table. I use a biomat on my treatment table. It's really cold in Wisconsin and my clinic's in the lower level. So it's really kind of chilly in these rooms. So I make sure everybody's really toasty warm here. Um, and so they have a biomat on the treatment table. And what I do for new clients is the table's preheated, but I turn the biomat off. I have them get up on the table and I check their, how tight, how much tenderness and tightness are in these master points up here. And usually the neck flexor also, and, um, might press on their liver while I'm at it right here. And then I turn the bio mat on. And if anybody is using an electric heating source for their table, they're going to want to do this too. turn the bio mat on and then recheck it. And she just tightened right up, like pretty severe, um, like muscle response. And she's just laying there. So it's all an involuntary response. So, um, and then what I did was I put her cell phone on her upper abdomen. So I placed the water and I placed the other items like right here on the abdomen while they're laying down. So I put her cell phone on her abdomen and rechecked these areas and it just tightened everything tightened up. She was like, like that almost. So I was like, okay, we got an EMF problem. So then what I did was I have shungite stones and some of those EMF protector stickers. So I went and just put a sticker between her phone and her body and, and put the phone back here with a sticker on it. And I tried two different types of stickers and one worked better than the other. And the one that worked really well, it didn't tighten it up. So that's how I know it's working. And she has an EMF sensitivity. However, even putting, so then what I did is I played around with, I had the, it was a little sticker, right? Little gold sticker. I'll, I'll show them to you guys next week. I put it on her liver, like right here on the liver area. And then I put the foam back there and it was better. But then I tried turning the biomat on it still set her off. The biomat doesn't set everybody off, but she was super sensitive. Um, so I did that. And then I tested her water or drinking water. She was on a well water in an area that didn't have a lot of farming. So she actually had decent water. Um, which is surprising to hear, but some people in Wisconsin have good water and she was a lucky one. I didn't have to give her the water lecture, which you guys will get next week. <laughs> um, so the first thing I do in my treatments is I look for symmetry in the body. Let's see where are we at in time. We have five minutes left. Does anybody uh, have any questions? Put them in here. I want to make sure I answer them before I go through this really quick detox, dredge the liver, liver 14 and lung one. I do do liver 14, a lot of my treatments. Um, will you show how to test during this course or is that in another class? It is in another class, but I can show how to test um, in uh, the weekend classes or just watch this one again. Um, or I don't know if there's some other intro ones, but we can figure it out. You can send me an email too. I have some testing videos I could give you a link to too. Um, so basically I visually assess the body and I look to see if the hips and the feet look symmetrical and I check for differences in tightness on different sides of the body. It was definitely tighter on the right. And then what I found out when I was checking her point prescriptions. So what I do is I check them to the pulse. Um, and I found that it was the same points on both sides of the body. So the, um, both sides of the body needed the liver detox treatment or liver support treatment. Let me see, which told me that her meridian system was symmetrical and it's probably because her and her husband are chiropractors and she gets adjusted like several times a week. Um, 
So the first thing I do is I check to regulate the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system, basically having that regulated allows the body to relax and the, the acupuncture is way more effective. So what I do is I go around and I check the abdomen and I'll talk about that. I have a textbook that talks about that too. And I look to see if when I press on the abdomen, does the shoulder tension decrease or increase? If the shoulder tension increases, they need a face down treatment. If the shoulder tension decreases, then they can do a face up treatment. So that's how I know if somebody needs to be treated face up or face down. It's really simple. Their body tells me. So her body relaxed when I pressed on the abdomen, which indicated that the face up was the optimal treatment position. And then, so based on the health history form, the most exclusive pulse positions, um, I checked basically liver three, gallbladder 34, lung 10 and LI five, because those are the pulses that were off. But her pulse strengthened and balanced when I pressed liver three, the liver balancing prescription and the sedation prescription bilaterally. So yeah, I had to do liver draining, which makes sense because the liver is really, um, was very swollen. So I tested the acupuncture points on both sides and the point prescription I use, um, I reorganized the Chinese six point or the Korean four points, some acupuncture points. And sometimes there are certain points that have to be checked for water metal substitutions. And she had those, um, that is, uh, if you guys want to learn how to do my style of acupuncture, you'll have to take the other class with E Lotus, the intro to body feedback, um, classes to really understand this fully. But basically in my textbook, I have it written out for people really nice. And it just explains what, how the points work in the five element system. So if you guys like theory, you're definitely going to want to get my textbook um, to go through that. So that is the, the basically the balancing points for the liver. Then I determine if it's excess or deficient and it was excess. So then I added liver two and heart eight. And again, I had to check heart eight and compare it to heart four and three, and she needed heart four and three instead. So this is kind of how I look at the trisection discord and the root liver excess was basically causing the gallbladder to not function right, resulting excess in the triple burner, which was the lymph nodes. And then the pericardium was deficient, which is not making the menstrual blood. So basically that's just kind of what I said. Pain over the liver area is worse with pressure indicating um, and severe nausea with pregnancy indicated and the elevated liver enzymes were all indications of this liver excess. Then the deficiency in the gallbladder with processing progesterone. Um, if the people have issues with progesterone, they usually always have a gallbladder problem. Difficulty digesting fats and chronic Xiaoyang headaches. Um, she also had excess in the triple burner with the swollen lymph nodes, ear congestion, and chronic Xiaoyang headaches and deficiency in the pericardium with blood deficiency and nausea. So basically, I just talked about how I test the oils, the herbs, and the different areas here. So we'll go through that more. I'll make sure I have more time for that, spend more time on that in the eight-hour classes, but it does definitely take a while to kind of go through the case studies. Um, and then I talked about essential oils. I use a lot of essential oils in my practice. I have a intro class with essential oils with E Lotus. So if you guys want to learn how to do essential oils, I would recommend starting there. So I tested for the essential oils and she needed a stronger liver organ detoxification blood blend. Um, and then there was palpable lymph nodes that I checked on. And then I talked about how I did the treatment. I applied the essential oils. I needled the abdomen first. Then I needled the liver four, three, spleen five and nine, lung eight, liver two, heart four and heart three. Great. Oh, good. Thanks for your comments, guys. And then I needled the supporting acupoints, triple burner five for the headaches, gallbladder 14, Taiyang and stomach three to address her head symptoms. Um, and then after the treatment, I retested that the areas that I talked about, and there was a 75% reduction in pain. Then I retested her water and her cell phone. 
The cell phone still increased the pain, but the water was neutral. So I, again, I remember I talked about, I placed the EMF sticker on her abdomen and then it was better. And uh, I checked multiple herbal formulas. She tested better for herbal ABX and then transfer factor sensitive. Transfer factor turns the immune system on to fight off infections. Um, the ones that I tested that didn't work were the ones underneath. I love the evergreen classic formulas. That's about 90% of what I use for herbs are the classic formulas, the ones that they make their classical formulas versus the traditional TCM formulas. So this is what I did. And then um, we were talking about what our liver pathology was. Um, and there's the end notes. So that's what I'm, I'm done. I wanted to walk you guys through what an initial consultation looks like. So you can think about, is this something you can do in your practice? Can you, can you do this quick little screening for EMFs? And can you look at a questionnaire and determine if they have endocrine disrupting chemical overload? It's really, it's pretty simple guys. I've got it down where I think it's, it's really simple and easy to implement. You don't have to do a bunch of tests. They don't have to spend a bunch of money. You just quick muscle test them and have them fill out a questionnaire. So I hope I see you guys um, at the class next weekend. And that's it for me. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Michelle, we appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us. And if you guys enjoy today's class, we appreciate if you could share with your colleagues. As a reminder, Michelle's webinars will be the following weekend, and it'll be on May 4th. 14 and 15. The topics will be environmental causes of infertility and treatment with TCM and treating EMFs sensitivity. We hope to see you guys there. Bye for now. And we will see you at the next webinar. Thank you, Donna.